Okay, so we have a lovely little math problem here, and I'm saying that you can't pass algebra if you don't know how to do a problem like this. And in fact, that would be a pretty accurate statement because in algebra, you're gonna to have to deal with a lot with powers and exponents. So this is a pretty basic example of something that all of you out there are taking any sort of algebra course or maybe uh, any kind of middle school or definitely high school level math course, of course, college as well, uh, you should be able to do. Now, it's not difficult, but what happens is a lot of students tend to confuse the, world, uh, the rules to uh, solve or simplify a problem like this. So we're going to go ahead and make sure you don't have any confusion. Now, if you want to go ahead and do this real quick, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, you can kind of check your work as I'm going to solve this step by step here in just one moment. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I've come to the conclusion that all students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, you got to be willing to do the work. Okay, If you're not willing to do the work, it's going to be hard to improve or learn math. And the second thing you need is great math instruction, super clear and understandable, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, and you need assistance in your math course, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of the video. Check it out. It will help you tremendously. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test like the GED, SAT, ACT, anything with a math section, maybe a, the ASVAB or a teacher certification exam, I can help you out. If you homeschool, I offer great middle school and high school math courses. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this basic problem. And if you think you know how to do it, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section or just kind of write it down here and let's take a look at what's going on. All right, so what we're dealing with is powers and exponents. So let's just review uh, powers and exponents. Of course, I got some rules here I'm gonna cover here in a second that we're gonna need to understand. But when we're looking uh, at something like a power, okay, we have, let's say two to the fourth power. That's how you would say that, two to the fourth power. But well, let's uh, take a look at something else here, actually. Let's put x to the seventh power. But it's important that you understand the terminology when it comes to powers, okay? So that's what we're dealing with. And when you learn about powers in algebra, you, you're going to learn some specific rules. But let's first understand the parts of a power. So this uh, bottom part of a power can be a number or a variable. In this case, it's always written larger, too, okay? You can see here I'm specifically writing this to bigger than this little four, and this x is bigger than this little seven. Okay, so they're not the same size, so that's done specifically. This part of the power is called the base. Okay, so that's a base. This is the base. And this little number up here, okay, is called the exponent. Okay, so this is the exponent, and this is the exponent. And what does it mean? What does it mean? Okay, well, this entire thing is a power. So this is two to the fourth power. So the whole thing is a power. And what it means is we're going to take this base two and we're going to multiply it by itself this many times. So that would be four times. So two times two times two. That's what two to the fourth power means. This is what we call expanded form. And this is in a power form. Okay. And of course, x to the seventh means we're going to Multiply x by itself seven times, so that would look like one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's you know pretty long way to write x to the seventh power. That's why we use powers and exponents to make our life a lot easier. All right, so just a quick review of powers and the parts of powers because you need to understand those uh, basic concepts of powers and exponents if you ex uh, expect uh, to learn all the rules. Uh, that you need to know in algebra. So there are other rules than this, but let me go ahead and just go ahead and tell you the rules, the algebra rules when we're dealing with powers and exponents. And if you notice here, we have a power and it's being taken to a, another power. So we need a rule for that. And then here we're multiplying this whole power by another power. So we need a rule for that. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this here in a second, but let's go ahead and cover the actual rule. So the first rule covers this situation when you're taking a power to another power. So a to the m to the nth power is simply a to the m times n. You just simply multiply 
uh, the outside exponent to the inside uh, exponent. That is the rule. You need to know that rule. Okay. Uh, there's other rules. I'm not covering them all uh, in this video. I'm just focusing on these rules here. Okay. How about this? We have a to the m times a to the n. What is this saying? Well, it's saying that you can, when you're multiplying powers that have the same base, what do you do? Well, the rule goes like this. It's a to the m plus n. You add the exponents. Let me give you a quick example for these right here. Let's say I had y squared to the fourth power. What does the rule say? Well, I have an outside exponent and inside exponent just simply distribute or multiply. So this would be y to the eighth power. And then let's go ahead and uh, show a simple example right here for this rule. Let's say I was going y cubed times y squared. Now let's notice here, the rule says the bases must be the same, exactly the same. Okay, so here, this is y, this is y. We have the exact same base, we're multiplying powers, so what, what we're gonna do here is add the exponents. So that'll be y uh, to the three plus two, which of course, that would be y to the fifth. So for example, y squared times x cubed, can we do that problem? The answer is no, because the bases here are not the same. So you have to be good at uh, reading or in, uh, interpreting these rules in mathematics, okay? So that's why it's so important to take notes and really you know, concentrate on the uh, proper application of all these rules. So these two rules here is what we need to simplify this problem. And uh, if you think you could do it, go ahead and let me just kind of erase all this stuff. Go ahead and do this uh, simple application of this rule. What you're going to do is this first. And then when you're done doing that, you're going to go ahead and finish up. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this now. Okay, again, this is basic algebra, but um, a lot of students tend to confuse this. I'll show you a common um, uh, confusion with this rule here. So we have x cubed to the second power. Again, we're going to multiply the out outside exponent to the inside exponent. So that'll be 2 times 3. That's x to the 6 uh, times x to the 10th. I'm looking at the bases. Oh, the bases are the same, exactly the same. x and x, it's multiplication. So I simply add the exponents. That's x to the 6 plus 10, which of course will be x to the 16th. Okay, so we got that right. Let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, a check mark, an A plus, 100%, and a few stars just to be like, you know, feel like super extra special uh, for being such an awesome math student. But let me show you a common mistake. And if some of you got this answer, well, a lot of uh, people make this mistake. They'll look at this. Uh, this 3 and 2, and a lot of students um, will forget this rule and they'll add the x, they'll add these exponents. So uh, in other words, they'll go, oh, x to the 5th, they'll go 3 plus 2 times x to the 10th, and they'll go, oh, uh, that's x to the 15th, okay? They might kind of do that, or, you know, if you got x to the 50th, well, obviously you're going to be, you know, you really have to kind of relearn all these rules, but if you got x to the 15th, well, you know, don't be so sad because, hey, a lot of students make that mistake. When you've been teaching this math as long as I have, uh, you know the mistakes students are going to make before they even do the problems. Okay, that's called experience. But uh, if you made that mistake, well, now you know not to make that mistake. Remember, these rules are extremely important in algebra. No, I'm not joking. You're not going to be able to pass algebra if you don't know how to deal with powers and exponents as they are everywhere in algebra. Okay. All right, so that's why I didn't want to, um, you know, tackle too much in this video. Remember, when you're learning math, it's always one step at a time, one skill at a time. Learn something, master it, practice it, then move on to the next skill. That's why it takes time um, and effort and, of course, great math instruction to learn uh, mathematics, especially everything you need to know in algebra and beyond. But hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that is the case, don't forget, again, to like and subscribe as that helps me out. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.